Back pain is really a bummer. Many of us have trouble just getting out of the shower, yet alone being with our family on a picnic or getting through a whole day's work due to disabling, agonizing, crappy, old back pain. Honestly, it's easy to lose hope. But I'm here to say that in 20 years of practicing neurosurgery, I saw tens of thousands of cases of back pain and I never saw a single one who was too far gone to get better. Truly, where there's life, there's hope. And the key to hope is progress, scientific progress. The good news is that holy cow, have I got some scientific progress to share with you today. Not just an amazing new device, but an entirely new idea. Could yours be the life it changes? Find out today on Best Practice. The very best tech in the world doesn't do any good at all if you've never heard about it. If you have back pain, hit the subscribe button in the comments to let us help. By the end of this video series, you'll be able to name the most likely cause of your back pain, list what science says is the right treatment, and pick the one that's best for your back. In addition, you'll learn the one thing you must do before even considering undergoing spine surgery. Then I'll introduce you to a total spine replacement, an exciting and novel concept for back pain sufferers, and let you know how to know if total spine replacement is right for you. But before we get started, if you have back pain and are interested in more content like this, we can help you, but first you have to help us. Do your part sign up for our series on advances and innovations in back pain. The key to your back pain going away forever may be just minutes away. Welcome back. In this episode of Best Practice, we're gonna cover four things. Let's start at the beginning, shall we? With the four common causes of back pain, you have to understand a problem before you can solve it. In this section, we'll match four common causes of back pain, AKA the problems, up with their evidence-based treatments, the solutions. Evidence-based is what science says. Pay careful attention to see if you recognize yourself in these conditions and take it to the next level by actually writing it down, the name of your condition and your best treatment option. Before listing the four things that may be causing your back pain, if you wanna get more content like this, then please click the subscribe button in the comment section below. We believe that everyone should get all the information they need to take proper care of their spine and joints and we are totally committed to providing you that information, but we have to know where to send it. Back pain is nearly always caused by the activation of pain receptors in one or a combination of these four things. Injured discs, arthritic facet joints, a pinched or inflamed nerve root, often due to a herniated disc, and compression due to spinal canal narrowing stenosis. The pattern of your back pain is a clue as to what's causing it. I'm going to go through the big four again and describe the kind of pain they cause. This time, match yourself to the pattern that sounds the most like you. An annular tear feels like a knife in the back. It's in the midline, often worse with sitting. Arthritis of a facet joint starts on one side of your back, spreads to your butt. Honestly, it feels like it's in your hip and burns in your outer thigh. Whereas pain from a pinched or inflamed nerve root 
due to a herniated disc is not even in your back. It feels like electricity and runs down your leg, causing numbness and weakness. Finally, stenosis causes pain, heaviness, or numbness in both legs with walking that's relieved by bending. Okay, you got it? Look, when you were a kid in school, you could look up the right answer in the back of your textbook. To look up the right answer for the cause of your back pain, you can find it in the radiologist's report of your imaging, your x-ray, bending x-rays, or MRI. Next, we're going to match what's wrong with the right treatment. Spinal surgery works great when the treatment is closely matched to the correct pain generator. For example, RFA, radiofrequency ablation, relieves 80% of pain in 60% of people for an average of 10 months. Laminectomy reliably relieves the leg pain of claudication due to spinal stenosis. Microdiscectomy stops sciatica cold in its tracks when it's caused by nerve root irritation due to disc herniation. And spinal fusion restores happiness for people with spondylolisthesis. By now, you should be able to write down what's wrong with you and the evidence-based recommendations for treatment. In the next section, we'll go over typical pain patterns by cause of pain. But if you need help now before going on, click the link or scan the QR code. We'll invite you to visit our site and ask you a few clarifying questions and presto, before you know it, you'll know what's wrong. In addition, in the next section, I'll also warn you why spine surgery does not always work and give you a sense of what to look out for. After that, we'll introduce you to a new approach and development for total spine replacement. Don't miss the next critical segment about back pain here on Best Practice. In the last segment, we reviewed the four most common causes of back pain and their evidence-based treatments. If you missed that, go back and check it out. In this segment, we'll go on and go over what you need to do to make sure you never get in a position to have a botched spine surgery. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. You often hear horror stories about back surgery, and there's a reason for that. Unlike the shoulder, knee, or even the hip, the lumbar spine is not one joint, it's 10. There are two facet joints, a disc, two nerve roots, and multiple ligaments at each level. To make matters worse, there are five different levels in the low back and a bonus one more if you count the sacroiliac joints. Each of these structures has a typical pattern of pain. If you understand the pain pattern, you can make a good guess as to the cause. As you might imagine, the complexity of the low back can lead to confusion, desperation, depression, and nothing good happens after that. I call this the death funnel because at the bottom, your life as you know it is functionally over and often literally as well. Let me give you an example. I once saw a 55-year-old man who had worked his whole life to retire early and couldn't travel because of severe back pain. He felt like he had a knife in the back. The pain was made worse by sitting down. MRI showed moderate spinal stenosis at L4-5. After canceling a cruise he saved up for for his entire life, the man found another spine surgeon who recommended an L4-5 laminectomy but the man still had the exact same pain after surgery and still couldn't go on the cruise. We obtained a repeat MRI study and the other surgeon had done a perfect laminectomy at L4-5, but the new scan showed a large tear in the annulus of the L5-S1 disc. The man and his surgeon took a chance on surgery that did not pay off. The main clue that the decision was wrong in the first place was the type of pain. Spinal stenosis causes claudication pain down the legs with walking, not a knife in the back pain that's worse when seated. 
This man had a bad result, but what did he do wrong? Well, he didn't get informed. It's your body. You must quarterback your own health care. Had this patient visited our site, learned the pattern of different types of back pain, he and his surgeon could have obtained a repeat MRI and discogram demonstrating the painful annular tear at L5-S1 leading to the correct treatment and a successful outcome. Stuff like this happens so often in spine surgery that doctors even have a code for it, post-laminectomy syndrome. Being your own quarterback means knowing the cause of your pain, appropriate imaging results, and when you need to act, finding the right doctor for an intervention. I know, that's a lot to remember. Well, here's a healthy hack. If you or someone you love needs spine surgery, complete this checklist first. If you can't check off all four of these boxes, then you are not ready for surgery. In my career, the real advances in medicine have occurred because of changes in technology. GPS guidance for brain surgery, robots for joint replacement, endoscopy and lasers for spine surgery, and now stem cells and amniotic growth factors for injection. The great thing about new tech is that it gives hope to those who are left behind by their legacy options. Speaking of new tech, the folks at 3Spine have a new device that's giving me hope for some of you. The new device, MODIS, addresses all four spine pain generators and throws in a potential fourth one for good measure. MODIS is a total spine replacement device. In this fashion, MODIS tackles all four pain generators. The painful disc is removed and replaced, the arthritic facet joints are drilled out, and the spinal nerve roots are decompressed as well. Nice. ABBA is known as a maximalist rock and roll group. Every track is loud, catchy, colorful, and all in. Think of three spine as the ABBA of spine surgery. Want to cover all four pain generators at once? Modus does that maximally. But there's another reason why you may want to take a chance on three spine, Fernando. Some surgeons believe persistent pain after spine fusion is caused by excessive force at the levels above and below. By preserving motion in the disc space, the modus tries to prevent adjacent level pain and degeneration. Warning, we've been here before and it didn't work out as well as we hoped. Artificial disc replacement in the low back tried to do the exact same thing but trials showed the first motion preservation devices were not effective in reducing adjacent level complications. That does not mean MODIS will not be effective, just that things don't always work out the way that device developers intended for them. Long story short, this is a maximalist approach, but it just may work, in particular for people who have the post-laminectomy syndrome. The new MODIS device is undergoing a clinical trial right now. Anecdotal reports of people who've had the procedure and are now pain-free give us hope. MODIS looks amazing. But how will we actually know if this new thing works? Definitive proof this approach works will depend on comparing it to the traditional fusion method. 3Spine, the maker of the new MODIS device for total spine replacement, is conducting a randomized clinical trial now. A randomized trial is where half the patients are randomized to receive MODIS, and the other half get legacy spinal fusion surgery. On our pyramid of evidence, a clinical trial is right here, the bottom level. After the trial is complete, the FDA will review the data and approve the new MODIS device only if it's found to be at least as effective and safe as spinal fusion. Unfortunately for those in pain today, 
It typically takes a few years for these trials to get done. Let's follow the outcome of this trial carefully. This could be a breakthrough. After all, where there's life, there's hope. If you liked this content and would like to learn more about advances and developments in back pain, then subscribe to this channel. If you prefer, we can email you updates to our free courses and other targeted content for people with back pain. We believe that everyone should have help when they are sick or in pain. Our content has helped thousands live better lives with less pain. If you need our help with back pain or something else, please just let us know. You're the reason we're here. Until next time, for best practice, I'm Dr. Dan Lieberman.